Hello everybody, um, today I'm going to talk about uh, some of the uh, most important uh, maps on Earth and particularly how uh, Tasmania uh, was discovered and Australia as well as kind of the last pieces of um, the world's map um, for the planet. Um, so I hope you really enjoy this discussion um, and... Uh, this goes back uh, about 500 years and really only the last few hundred years, um, really up until the, around the 1800s, um, or, um, which is really only a few hundred years ago, um, and uh, looking at uh, how Tasmania was discovered uh, and basically what some details are uh, about the future of basically the North Pole and South Pole. Um, and some of the expeditions uh, that kind of led uh, to uh, understanding Antarctica uh, as we understand it today um, on a map. Um, so, uh, and also looking at kind of like really far future, uh, next uh, few hundred years or even next few thousand years and beyond uh, of what uh, the uh, kind of like the, the future of uh, other planets are in our solar system and how we might uh, communicate uh, both logically and spiritually uh, with all the other uh, kind of major <clears throat> planets and uh, everything really in our in our solar system. So uh, basically what you're looking at here is Tasmania. Uh, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see uh, what's going on. Um, so basically it's a, it's a very mysterious island. Uh, and you can see on this map, uh, and, and, and it basically points to Antarctica. Uh, and there's a what's called the magnetic pole, which is right in this region here. There seems to be a uh, very mysterious fault line that splits in three ways uh, right here. Uh, and basically, if you follow that straight down, you basically go off a little bit off to the left. As you can see, there's some earthquakes heading off there. Uh, that will take you essentially to the uh, magnetic a South Pole. And what you'll notice here is that um, actually New Zealand shows up here on this map. Um, and um, we're going to look at uh, some details here uh, about how this all kind of, uh, how the maps kind of came together. Um, on the northern side, <clears throat> you basically see this very mysterious point here. Um, and what you see is if you trace this across Antarctica, uh, which we'll hopefully try to do here in a moment. Uh, so sorry, it's actually very slow. Uh, but what you'll notice is that this points not only to uh, this magnetic pole, but it actually also points to the tail of Antarctica as well as the tail of South America here. So you can kind of follow that across. Um, and I just wanted to kind of uh, get an overall picture so you can see how Tasmania fits into um, basically everything else on the planet. I'm going to have to zoom out here um, because it's just so much information and it's not really moving around very easily. Um, all you'll be able to see right now is the major fault lines on this map. Uh, but there's actually an interesting concept. Uh, this plate here, a lot of people consider even another continent. It kind of shows up. It's one of the largest uh, kind of land masses. It's a reverse boot. You can see the boot kind of pointing out this way. Um, there's kind of another boot going that way. Uh, it's kind of a hidden continent uh, that a lot of people uh, talk about. So I wanted to talk about a couple things here um, as we look around uh, at what's going on for the entire planet. Um, so the early, uh, when, we, when we zoomed out and we looked at basically the entire planet, uh, you'll see this major cloud formation kind of swirling over here. Um, <clears throat> you'll see these clouds <clears throat> oftentimes uh, kind of pick up and then heading down here. And then there's another cloud range heading out here. And it actually goes right over the islands here. And oftentimes it flows even further up uh, north, as you'll see, in the Solomon Islands. And you'll see it kind of uh, track with the earthquakes um, and other regions. So I'm really sorry this moves around so slowly. Um, it's just there's so much information on this map. Um, but basically what I wanted to highlight is that uh, at the time, uh, originally uh, Europe was fairly well mapped. Uh, that started about a thousand years after uh, after the death of Jesus. Um, and then uh, 
basically in around the year of 1100. Uh, we're going to go through some of those maps, and then there started to become in the uh, around the time when uh, North America, uh, Columbus uh, sailed across the Atlantic for the first time, uh, 1492, 1500s. Uh, that was the first perspective that we had, essentially of uh, North America and South America. Um, and you'll see here, um, that was quite a big project uh, sailing across the ocean. Um, there is some confusion in exactly what happened. Um, he actually sailed more towards the uh, warmer areas, um, not really towards uh, North America. He actually sailed a lot into the Caribbean. Um, so uh, it's a little bit confusing uh, history sometimes. Um, and you, so you'll see in early maps, they'll actually map uh, the Caribbean here uh, and then even parts down to the Amazon jungle. So really, the last two areas uh, to be fully mapped were really on the poles, right? Which was essentially the North Pole uh, and the South Pole. Um, and it turns out that the South Pole is quite a bit colder. Um, so really, Antarctica <coughs> and really Tasmania uh, was the last area to really be <coughs> fully mapped on our planet. Um, and you'll kind of see that in the maps here. I'm going to turn this around so you can see. Um, but you can see this major fault line uh, basically heading into this uh, kind of like Y-shaped, upside-down Y uh, fault. Um, <clears throat> now, the main goal of what we're trying to talk about here is really uh, farther into the future, um, mapping things uh, even outside of our own planet um, and looking at other planets uh, and how uh, work, uh, basically the work that we're all doing all around the world is kind of interconnected um, through the geography, um, both, this, both the logical geography and the spiritual geography of the planet. Um, and you can see uh, this might be a very mysterious island here uh, that one day might become the capital of Antarctica. Um, and it's as you move around on the map, uh, you start to see uh, things that uh, make uh, some new sense. So there's basically kind of a <clears throat> uh, elliptical circle around Antarctica. This is the Arctic plate here. Um, and then you can see again uh, Tasmania here um, and kind of this fault that kind of converges around here around Antarctica uh, and then really heads up into the Middle East. Um, so going back to the early stories, one of the things that really surprised me um, was how important uh, Jakarta was uh, in the history of our entire planet. Um, so as they started to map um, out, do the last parts of the map, which is really only in the last few hundred years, um, they started to explore India, and then they went out into the islands, uh, basically Oceania here, right? And so this was the kind of the, the headquarters of the Dutch East India Company. Um, so the Europeans kind of all agreed uh, that the Sunda Strait here um, was kind of the headquarters uh, for the oceanography, the sailing, uh, trading, and all that. Could have been Singapore, but it actually was uh, modern day. It's probably Singapore um, because of that strait here. A lot of the traffic, uh, so much... 30% of all the goods basically come from China and perhaps even more so when you include India and the rest of Southeast Asia. Um, but uh, in terms of the frontier, Jakarta was that frontier um, and essentially Java. Uh, so I'm going to go through and show you a bunch of these maps. Um, and I'm sorry it's moving so slowly, um, but it's just uh, so much information here. Let me see if I can do anything about this. So I'm really sorry I had to remove a lot of the earthquakes off of this map um, so it moves a little so it's just so awesome to be able to see all the earthquakes, but now it will move a little bit faster. There's just hundreds of thousands of earthquakes uh, that I put on that map, um, and it probably even makes it a little bit confusing uh, to look at the plate boundaries. Um, but essentially, this was the frontier, uh, this whole triangular region, um, in terms of understanding the planet. Um, and then furthermore, um, a leader that became Australia, uh, Tasmania, uh, New Zealand, and even down into Antarctica. And then heading out into the deep Pacific uh, with some very mysterious islands, including uh, Fiji um, and Tahiti, as you head out even here um, to that area. Uh, so before we get into all the details, I wanted to show you a couple more maps, particularly of Tasmania. Um, 
and basically what we're looking for um, here on these maps um, is basically kind of a futuristic version of the planet um, and basically seeing how um, this is all related to the North Pole and the South Pole. Um, so basically, uh, if this area becomes uh, the capital of the North Pole, uh, and I'll explain some reasoning behind that, um, essentially some of that reasoning has to do with the uh, electromagnetic fields of the planet, uh, and then how this is the magnetic South Pole. Um, and basically Tasmania basically points to that as well as close proximity to a potential uh, capital of Antarctica. So if you look at this here, it basically makes a lot of sense that this might be the capital um, because it's essentially too cold on the planet. If you look at many of the research bases around Antarctica, they are basically uh, becoming dumping sites um, for uh, research rather than actual um, research going on there. Um, and it turns out uh, a lot of the uh, satellite uh, research that they do, so they launch satellites that are polar orbital and they do um, some research on here, but it doesn't actually need to necessarily be, be done uh, directly on Antarctica. So uh, so that that's one of the reasons for having a capital off Antarctica is just simply um, you know, getting uh, to a negative 100 degrees Fahrenheit um, is quite cold. Um, it's uh, unbelievably cold. So uh, now, uh, so what, what does that bring us to the North Pole? So uh, basically what I started to do is try to understand the planet uh, and how different parts are connected. Um, as you can see here, there's kind of a New Zealand boot um, that kicks something off into outer space here. And you can kind of see how that kind of um, sends this whole region here. This is an extremely uh, volcanic uh and there's just earthquakes here happening every day on, um, you know, pretty sizable earthquakes. Um, so uh, basically you can kind of see here um, that's kicking definitely something off to the North Pole. So right away you can start to see um, there's de definitely a major shift uh, as you boot this off here. And if you look at this carefully, you'll notice that this will actually head out um, to Alaska. Uh, when you're going to cross this ocean, here's Hawaii. And then it actually kind of reverts here. You can see... Uh, this is kind of spinning off to the left here, and then it kind of spins off the coast of Hawaii with a spin here, and then actually heads off to here, and then back through here, and then back also up to the North Pole. So you can kind of see um, there's kind of a lot, um, a lot happening all throughout the Pacific, um, but particularly how this uh, seems to redirect uh, all the earthquakes on the planet, and this is basically one of the most active regions. So what I really wanted to look at um, is basically the structure of Tasmania here um, and try to understand essentially how, if this is connected to the North Pole uh, spiritually and logically, and, and someday this might be essentially the capital of the North Pole, um, how, what, what exactly do we need to know about? Um, what's the history um, behind the exploration here? Um, is there clues that can help us really understand um, some of the details here you can start to see some of the road maps um, and you can see um, basically western uh, southwestern as basically has almost no roads um, and it's actually very different geology um, as we're going to see um, later in this discussion and you and actually melbourne uh, right here um, is hugely important to uh, what's been happening um, so we kind of want to look at um, basically essentially everything about tasmania and try to understand um, how that potentially would be connected to the North Pole. So let's just go up to the North Pole really quick. Um, so clearly this side is pointing down to the magnetic pole. Um, this side here ha has kind of a loop area here, um, and there's kind of a mysterious uh, gap between uh, basically Australia um, and uh, Tasmania. Now I wanted to show you one quick image uh, to kind of show you a chase that's going on here. Now, so if you look at Antarctica, uh, you'll see that Antarctica seems to be chasing Australia. Um, and clearly, um, Antarctica is the South Pole. Um, there's not too much debate on that. Um, but on the North Pole, um, so you basically have something weird going on on our planet. Um, and I'll try to spin this around here and zoom out. So basically, the mysterious thing is that on the North Pole, uh, there's a big hole here, essentially, with uh, one very mysterious 
um, place called Greenland. Um, and then there's kind of these three islands here. And then there's another mysterious boot um, right here. Um, so uh, the question is, uh, you can also see kind of a mirror image. You see uh, kind of a f empty place here. And then you see um, Greenland basically being almost the same shape. So it's almost like a mirror copy here. And then there's another kind of triangular region um, right here that actually looks just like India. Um, and if you trace this triangle over, you'll see that India actually has a similar triangle shape here. Uh, I'll try to bring that around so you can see. So it's a little bit shifted off. It's actually pointing a slightly different direction. And then there's these kind of like three islands and then another boot um, that happened here. So uh, there's just so much history on both the North Pole and South Pole. Um, these maps, a lot of people have never even seen. Uh, the North Pole really in as much detail as you're looking at right now um, really in the last uh, you know decade or so it's only been 10 years uh, that we've had some of these uh, maps like you're able to see right now so uh, and there's also some other mysterious islands on the other side of this fault line there's these two here and then kind of a third area right in here um, and then this is the this is the gap between uh, basically Russia and and uh, North America, um, you can see um, there's some kind of very mysterious island right in between here. Um, but this is the Bering Strait. Um, so again, one thing that we're trying to understand um, as we study the planet, uh, there's basically a lot of fields that come in and out of the poles. Um, so our planet is spinning, as you know. Uh, and any object that spins, especially a big object uh, the size of the planet Earth, um, you know, a, a, as it spins around here, uh, it's going to have a lot of fields. There's actually uh, s the spin actually creates uh, what's called the aurora, um, right? And those are essentially uh, glowing lights. There's actually electrical sparks um, in the sky. Uh, it's unbelievable. Um, e even I still can't believe um, that they have these aurora. Um, but uh, it's certainly one of those spectacles. Uh, and the aurora actually doesn't uh, go perfectly around the North Pole like a perfect circle. Um, part of that is because our planet is on an axis. It's not perfectly straight up and down axis. It's actually about 23 and a half degrees off um, the center so that the axis was here. There's actually, it's actually spinning quite a little bit different uh, than you might expect um, tilted relative to the sun. Um, and that actually creates the seasons. Um, so if the equator runs through here, um, that that basically creates this 23 and a half degrees, essentially 30 degrees uh, from either side of the equator uh, becomes a tropical region. Um, so that is year round and that's basically 60 degrees uh, when you add the two northern parts and the southern part. Um, and then you basically have um, further south here um, and we're going to talk about what happens there's actually something very mysterious um, that happens because uh, unlike anywhere else on the planet uh, this ocean can actually circle all the way around uh, there's a little bit of a break right in through here but essentially the currents uh, spin around Antarctica and the waves get to be the tallest on the planet um, here because there's just they're not stopped. They just keep uh, going around in circles. So it's almost like a halo around Antarctica. Um, so it actually gets to be extremely dangerous when you head south of even the tip of, uh, of Africa here. Uh, any further south than that um, gets very dangerous sailing. There's 40-foot waves. So a 40-foot wave, I don't know if you can imagine one foot, but you multiply that by 40. Um, that's a pretty common wave, um, you know, in, in the Southern Ocean, and that's at 40 degrees or even 50 degrees um, from uh, the uh, center here, um, which would be um, right around here. So, so let's go back to Tasmania again. Um, so the shape of it is actually quite unusual. Um, if you look at it, uh, sorry, I gotta I messed up this map a little bit here. Let me zoom out. Um, but you can see it's almost like a heart or a, it's also even a triangular shape here. Um, and so uh, it has kind of a very mysterious look to it uh, in general. You can also see some of the major rivers uh, on this map um, as well as uh, some of the population. So the population is kind of this bright blue area. Let's kind of zoom out and you can see 
how Melbourne uh, is pretty hugely populated compared to uh, Tasmania. Uh, but there's not a whole lot of farming uh, going on. You can see the farming regions uh, kind of in these greenish red zones um, here. And then I want to look at the soil region here too. Uh, so you can start to compare uh, some of the mainland Australia um, with Tasmania here. You can see um, there is some similarities and also pretty significant differences. Um, this pink area um, is fairly farmable um, and especially in this region here you can see um, this bright pink um, is especially farmable um, and then some of these uh, other regions are maybe not as farmable um, and then you get uh, just different areas all around Tasmania so pretty soon we're going to get into the history of Tasmania and try to link some of that to the North Pole um, so right away we see two very mysterious islands on either side here uh, there's basically this side and that side and this actually even a lot of people consider this a bridge uh, at one point uh, in history it may have actually been connected um, but you can basically see um, that there is some very mysterious islands here as well as some other very mysterious islands here um, and so you might want to ask yourself um, how was Tasmania uh, discovered um, and what what was like like who discovered it why did they discover it um what was the whole uh reasoning behind that um and then how does that fit into the future of our entire planet um this small island here um that somehow seems to point uh to this magical south pole um very close to this very strange boot um and we and as we discussed we have maybe uh three boots on the planet we have uh, Italy, um, which was very well known at the time, um, and uh, mapped out pretty carefully, uh, but New Zealand was not, um, as well as uh, some of those other islands on the North Pole that we looked at um, here. So, uh, but let's just familiar ourselves with the whole entire planet uh, and try to see uh, exactly why Tespenia uh, fits into this whole discussion. Uh, so I want to discuss a little bit more on both the spiritual side of the planet. Um, so as we look at the planet um, in a new perspective, um, because we're thinking about uh, things beyond our own planet now um, and how everything is connected to the universe, um, clearly uh, the poles matter a lot um, because of that kind of aurora effect. Um, so for me personally, I was really interested in how uh, the planet may communicate um, with the entire universe, right? Um, so the question here is at, that um, if you're uh, following a kind of a concept that the Earth is alive uh, and that it has um, essentially something that looks like a brain here, um, as we can all see, um, this looks like at the top of a brain and perhaps even a spinal cord here. Um, it, makes, it makes a lot of sense that the communication would actually go through essentially the, this uh, brain of the planet um, prior to going out into the universe. Um, and as you see, the aurora will kind of um, be sparking, uh, connecting with the sun, as well as uh, deeper parts around the galaxy and other places. So a lot of this may seem a little bit mysterious at first. You might say, well, um, how is this even possible? I thought the planet was just a bunch of different land masses. Um, what is really going on? How is this even possible that, um, you know, there's actually something really... Uh, spiritual going on here, not just a uh, flat earth kind of concept uh, spiritually about the entire planet. Um, so basically what probably as a, as a kid, one of the first things you notice is these boots. Um, this looks like a leg. Um, and then you also notice Italy has that. Um, and there's many other shapes. You'll start to see um, this triangular region here um, looks pretty mysterious. Um, we also have another triangular region here, uh, India. Uh, why does India have a point here? Uh, why is there an island here? Why is there another island here? You might start to notice, look, this looks like almost like an elephant um, with an eyeball here and then maybe a nose in this region and then maybe even an earring. Uh, they call this the Horn of Africa. Uh, there seems to be two canals here. Um, is this, uh, what does that mean spiritually? Um, is this perhaps an ear entirely uh, for the planet? Um, so, as you start to put the pieces of the puzzle together, we're still looking at Tasmania. Um, I wanted to keep the discussion pretty logical because sometimes people get pretty afraid uh, when we ta start talking about how to work together spiritually across the entire planet. They say, wow, 
Um, this is pretty far out of discussion. I don't know if I can quite handle this. Um, but from a logical perspective, this is the magnetic pole. The actual pole is here. Um, but what is interesting is that anyone that uses a compass or is guided spiritually around the planet basically follows this as the pole, not this as the pole. Uh, so there's actually quite a debate. Um, we're spinning around this axial pole, and yet um, this is the magnetic pole. Why is there such a huge gap? This is many thousands of miles uh, difference. Uh, same thing happens on the North Pole. It is actually shifted, uh, and it's not necessarily shifted directly opposite. It's actually shifted differently on each pole. A lot of that has to do with um, what's going on inside the planet. Um, it may be very different than what we think. Um, so what I wanted to propose to you is that the classical definition of the pole, uh, which may be here, is actually probably not correct. Uh, what the universe considers in terms of the forces on the planet, we're spinning around this axis, but most of the universe would actually regard this as the pole. Uh, so the spiritual concept is actually maybe more true uh, than the actual logical concept, which is here. Um, so there is definitely an argument. And further, um, there is nothing really pointing to this this point here, as whereas Tasmania actually is pointing to the South Pole. Um, and one of the questions is that uh, in electricity and magnetism, uh, the North and the South is actually swapped. Um, one of the reasons for that is that um, although they would say everything is going into the South Pole, the actual particle flow is going out of the South Pole rather than in. So that means that basically things are going in. So there's actually kind of a confusion in electricity. Uh, when they first started to uh, do positive and negative, uh, north and south, uh, they actually diagrammed it exactly opposite. Um, from what the particle flow is. Um, so the electrons are actually coming out of the South Pole. Whereas when you look at a typical field diagram, they'll show things going into the South Pole. Um, and it's very obvious that there is an Antarctica here and there is no major mass on the North Pole. This would definitely suggest that that argument is true, that things are definitely going in here and they would probably definitely be going out here because essentially there is an Antarctica here. And yet, if you really carefully study electricity, negative, this is the neg considered the negative pole, where in some ways it's actually considered the positive pole um, because there's actual particles here, there's actual land mass. So I hope you understand that discussion uh, a little bit. Um, it is kind of a confusing discussion, um, even for people uh, who have stu spent their lives studying electricity, uh, may get quite confused on that topic. Uh, but uh, it still doesn't answer the question, uh, why would this potentially be connected to the North Pole, right? So this is actually being kind of almost sent into the field pole here. Uh, and there's actually this another diamond shape here, which is very similar shaped, uh, smaller shaped uh, than this entire diamond shape here. Uh, so we start to see uh, that these pathways going up to the North Pole, it's very clear that this whole chain reaction if we looked at the earthquakes you'd notice how powerful these earthquakes are i'll try to load up the earthquakes a little bit later in this diagram and you can see it basically heads right up to the uh, pole here now on the north pole there's a different point here is that the magnetic pole actually points to right here so an easy way to remember that is this mysterious triangle seems to point right precisely where the magnetic pole whereas the actual pole that we're spinning on is somewhere over in this region um, maybe more connected to these three islands here. Um, so, and then you also have uh, this Atlantic Fault. So, and then there's this mysterious uh, Greenland thing kind of heading down here. Now, this Atlantic Fault is one of the most straightest faults, and I'm going to have to spin this around uh, to show you this. Uh, but it's not just any old fault on the planet. Um, you can actually see it actually divides pretty clearly uh, without too much separation going all the way between uh, the Western world and the Eastern world, uh, and then basically heading down to Antarctica here. And so it's a pretty uh, definable fault. You can even see little ripples in the actual seafloor uh, that basically show that pretty clearly. Um, it's important to notice there are some intersections here. This actually is probably, this split is perhaps from all of the split um, between uh, basically the Mediterranean, and here you can have the Caribbean area here um, splitting around. Uh, but let's go back 
to Tasmania for a second. So we have a couple points here uh, that we've been looking at, right? Uh, it's no joke how important uh, this whole area is in South Africa. Uh, I just read the other day they discovered the world's largest di diamond recently, again, in Africa. Um, but it actually was discovered first in South Africa, uh, which is slightly larger than the one that they just discovered in Botswana. Um, but so there's some very mysterious forces uh, happening in South Africa, particularly for mining um, and some other things. Um, but basically, this goes down around here. And then we head back to Tasmania. Um, so again, I wanted to remind everyone that it looks like uh, Antarctica is almost chasing and it even seems to fit almost perfectly right into this pocket. Um, so it shows that uh, in some ways this may have been spiritually the entire uh, the entire Australia may have been spiritually misplaced on the North Pole. Um, so that's an interesting discussion uh, essentially to have about Antarctica. And here you can see Antarctica again, kind of a northern side and a southern side. So it may actually there is a lot of evidence to suggest that this shape here, in fact, could fit. Uh, on the North Pole, um, almost, almost exactly. Um, so uh, th that's a very mysterious question, uh, making this possibly even the capital. Um, now we also have this point here. Um, I'm going to pause this because I've probably gone through so much information that a lot of people are a little bit uh, dazed and confused about things. Um, but wherever we are on the planet, um, we're trying to work together uh, here. Um, and what I wanted to highlight is that uh, this is all new information. Um, understanding the planet spiritually, no one is really talking about this. Um, and yet our day-to-day -day lives perhaps even depend the future of what we're gonna do off the planet, what we're gonna do here on the planet, may entirely depend on every aspect of the entire planet. Uh, whether you're in uh, India, which is actually quite small, um, and then you look at the vast size of Africa, uh, whether you live in Africa, or whether you live in Europe, uh, closer to the North Pole. Uh, remember a lot of the early discoveries, the last part of the map uh, basically came uh, from the European sailors. Um, and uh, that's a big important part of history, uh, the fact that they are so close to the North Pole. Uh, and then actually also looking at the role of Africa, um, if it's very clear that this is a white pole here, um, what if the North Pole is actually a black pole? Um, and it actually is because there's actually more ocean up here. Um, the ice is actually melting quite a bit. It's a totally different concept on the North Pole entirely. Um, and then as you get over to, um, if you live in uh, any of these regions in North America or South America, um, it's certainly a huge conversation um, how all the pieces of the puzzle fit together, um, whether you live in the Caribbean, uh, South America, um, or even if you're living on Antarctica, perhaps on the tail here, or in Patagonia down here. Um, but uh, you can see some other points, uh, and there's some different things uh, that you'll start to see as you look at these maps. So we're basically looking at a weird point here, which is uh, similar to this missing point. Notice that you have a point here, point here, and a point here. Um, we have a lot of different areas uh, that are kind of pointing to different directions here. Um, but uh, the reason that I wanted to highlight Tasmania today is mainly because it's pointing to the field pole here, um, unlike any other place on the entire planet. So I'm going to take a quick break here um, and let everyone think, kind of digest about this. You can go grab a map, uh, take a look at what's going on uh, wherever you are on the planet. And you start to think uh, how all the pieces of the puzzle are fitting together. I'm going to add uh, back the earthquake map onto this. Uh, it's going to take quite a little bit of uh, work to do this, unfortunately. And it's going to really slow down everything. But it's really important to see uh, just the earthquakes here on this. Um, so I'm going to hopefully get this all. And I kind of divided it up into different magnitudes. So I have 6.0 plus. There's actually becomes... Uh, a lot less earthquakes as you go higher and higher into the uh, scale here. Um, it's probably going to take completely freeze up my computer. Um, but I wanted to show you this just so you can see this uh, really quickly. So, um, and it still didn't even zoom in all of it. I think I'm still missing quite a bit of the earthquakes here. Uh, but you can see um, there's actually quite a lot less earthquakes here. But at one time, 
uh, this all was all of these were earthquakes they had to push this up from the ocean floor um, this came from somewhere um, and you can kind of see the gap uh, between this distance to here you can kind of say that at one point uh, this was a very active region um, but it shifted <coughs> basically out to the boot region um, so this gives us some <coughs> knowledge uh, spiritually about what's going on with the planet um, because we can kind of see the gap between here and here as well as these smaller islands showing a gap between here and here this is probably a newer island uh, out in the ocean here um, in general we can kind of uh, gauge that based on where the current earthquakes are um, and you can see a few earthquakes happening right down here but not really on Tasmania um, so the good news is that Tasmania is quite safe and protected from earthquakes at least for the next however many years kind of measure that time zone based on uh, some of this here so I finally moved the map um, it's just taking a huge amount of time uh, to do anything on this map so uh, basically it's really slow uh, because of all the earthquakes um, but I'm gonna try <laughs> I try to move this here and you can see uh, as we kind of shift this I'm gonna shift this down here uh, to kind of get a better perspective so you can see how this almost runs parallel this point here as well as this point here and then kind of a third point over here heading out into uh, the capital off Antarctica so I really hope you've enjoyed this part of the presentation uh, the next part is going to get into some crazy details um, as we work on this we really want to think about how this may be connected to the North Pole um, so as we study some of the details um, I'm kind of leaving that open uh, to everyone on the planet um, because we want to kind of see uh, how a new unexplored island um, which is still uh, not really populated uh, can be uh, kind of change the entire future of the planet um, here um, and I wanted to also mention um, other places around uh, the planet it's not just this place uh, there's a boot here there's a place over here all these other places um, are extremely important um, and don't forget about where you live and how that may be connected uh, to the North Pole and South Pole as we dig into some of these details um, about basically uh, Tasmania um, here. So uh, I'm going to have to pause this um, just because there's just been so much uh, stuff that we just discussed. Um, but I'm going to try to leave this at an image so that we can kind of see um, a reasonable amount of detail here. Um, so I'm sorry to be back so quickly here, uh, but what I wanted to mention uh, on these early world maps, you may want to go through this document um, and just take a careful look at it. It's actually not a very good document um, because actually not a lot is known um, and there's quite a lot of debate. Um, I mean, in an early world map, certainly there's only some towns that were mapped uh, and even the um, the entire Mediterranean. I really like this this map here, but I want to show this upside down map. Um, it's one of my favorite. Uh, it's in 1154, uh, and it actually shows Africa on the north. So this is actually showing north is south and south is north, um, and that's because uh, much of the world that was not known was essentially Africa at the time, right? So you can see this is uh, probably Spain here, and then you have uh, England, uh, and then you have parts of Italy and then some of the islands uh, in the Mediterranean and then you also have um, you know basically this is the Constantinople uh, which is basically Turkey um, and Istanbul and then you basically have uh, the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea and then you can also see pretty clearly defined here in this map is the Middle East Saudi Arabia um, as well as getting out further over into India you can see Sri Lanka maybe even is looks bigger than all of India in this picture, which is kind of funny. So, uh, but what I wanted to mention in these early maps uh, that's particularly important uh, is some of the mistakes are actually, uh, when you think about the planet, no one really wanted to make mistakes on a map. Um, they did their absolute best, I'm sure, to try to diagram this. Uh, you can see here's an early map of Korea, which I really love, very accurate shape there on Korea. Uh, and um, just so many other maps here to look at. Um, like I said, these are not necessarily the best, uh, but it really took almost 500 years. Uh, you can see this is a really interesting map as well um, because you have a very accurate diagram of Africa here at this point, and then you can start to see the Caribbean, 
uh, with probably Cuba and then this really pointy area being Florida, right? And then you have maybe Haiti, Dominican Republic, Jamaica, uh, Puerto Rico, and then even getting down here into uh, Brazil and the Amazon. So that's actually pretty accurate. Um, but some of these mistakes that I wanted to highlight um, are actually super important, right? Um, because it's going to help us uh, at the time. Uh, remember, there was no really good co compasses do not work. It's not if you actually work with a compass, it will actually they had to use the stars uh, to guide them um, because the compass will be shifted off because the electromagnetic field is not straight. Um, and the more you understand about that key, the more you'll realize uh, how useless a compass is. Um, it's actually out on the ocean. It can be a complete catastrophe trying to sail around the world with a compass. Um, because it can be off by like 90 degrees uh, at some points um, on the planet. Um, so what I wanted to say is that a lot of the navigation was actually spiritual at the time. Like the sailors uh, had to use uh, the wind, they used the stars, um, and they used the weather to kind of guide them. You know, if, if it was a bad day, you know, they're, <laughs> if it's a bad month even, um, you know, they're not going to be sailing out into the deep parts of the ocean, unexplored lands. Um, so you can see there's some mistakes here. This mistake is actually very interesting because these points uh, actually resemble a lot of the mistakes that you see in Australia. Um, so one of the earliest maps, you'll notice there is no Australia in any of these maps. There's no Antarctica. There's no North Pole. Uh, and that's even the 1500s. That's only a few hundred years ago. Um, and then you can start to see them kind of getting into the polar maps. Here, right, this guy kind of started to get the polar map. Um, and that's actually pretty, uh, the North Pole was actually pretty well diagrammed there. Um, but it wasn't until about the 1600s. Now here you see uh, 1500s. Uh, I think there's a one right in here uh, that actually shows Australia uh, that I wanted to show you really quickly here. Uh, yeah, so I think this was the first one right here. Um, so this major point, you can see how originally that point was uh, basically Singapore uh, and there was... Uh, basically the point of India here um, and then there was that whole area heading out into Java and Sumatra but look at how vast Australia was they actually considered it almost the entire South Pole um, there was no Antarctica it was basically even considered um, basically the South Pole and now the new era that we're making is basically placing Australia on the North Pole um, so some of these mistakes uh, although they may have seemed like mistakes, were actually um, spiritually guided. Um, they thought they thought that was the truth at the time, uh, and there actually may be some truth on what we're talking about in some of these mistakes. Uh, we need to carefully look at them um, to see uh, what they actually understood, uh, because spiritually, some places, uh, because of population, they may have more carefully mapped it. Here, you can start to see. Uh, Tasmania on this map, and this is actually after Tasman uh, in the 1658. You can start to see um, there are starting to be some more details there, uh, and some pretty accurate uh, images, and actually some uh, various uh, incorrectness on, on the sizes here. Um, that, and part of that has to do with the way that the uh, map was defined. Um, you know, it's actually, although it looks like it's off on this map. Um, it actually depends. It's actually correct. The sizes are actually correct because the uh, it's on a sphere here, and it's not actually uh, it's on a flat map. So even though it does look, there's just different types of maps uh, to work with. Um, so uh, and actually, the most recent map really here, um, which is in 17, essentially 1800, shows Australia, and it doesn't even show Tasmania here. It shows it connected uh, to. Uh, to Australia, and you don't really even see New Zealand. Here's New Zealand on this side, as well as all these other islands. Um, so that was pretty much uh, a quick overview of all of that. Um, but uh, what we're going to go into next is kind of looking at how they discovered this uh, in terms of passageways. Um, so this is going to be quite an extensive topic. Uh, there's actually just a ton of of information here. I think I have like 50 slides. Um, so it's kind of pretty extensive. So I'm gonna have to like pause this. Um, but I'm gonna go through this really quickly um, at first, uh, just so everyone can see everything. And then we'll kind of go back into the details 
um, as, at a moment here, if possible. Um, so this is Tasman's diagram of uh, essentially uh, Australia. Uh, and I wanted to see if I could change the uh, uh, colors here so that you could kind of see. It's really hard to see the diagram here. So actually what I did is there's two diagrams. There's another one um, later on. But basically uh, we'll look at this diagram uh, carefully um, because it shows some interesting mistakes. So I want to just go through this like really lightning fast uh, because I may have to just uh, talk about this at some other point. Um, it's just so much information. Um, so basically what we want to do is carefully understand uh, what's going on on these islands in particular. Uh, this whole ring may actually be kind of spiritually connected to the North Pole, including up into here, Melbourne, uh, along the coast of Australia. Um, we may be able to link this to the North Pole someday, uh, and each one of these islands uh, can be extremely important. Uh, so kind of looking at this whole area, um, I think it's called the Bass uh, Strait, uh, named after the guy um, who uh, carefully worked on this um, there's also some research bases uh, if you look carefully at this uh, connected to Tasmania look at what they got going on here very mysterious stuff happening here uh, this is um, some scientific research they got a radar here uh, a bunch of different um, places this is actually closer to New Zealand um, and you can see uh, here is the uh, church on the South Pole on Antarctica I thought this was kind of a funny uh, picture here um, and then you can kind of see uh, the major city is Hobart down here. Um, so actually some of the some of the history is pretty wild. Um, I was talking to my brother over lunch about this. Actually, they took a lot of prisoners um, out into the ocean. Um, so uh, at one time in history, uh, this was not exactly pirates were a very real thing. Um, and basically they tried to create uh, almost a prison down here. Um, for people and in some ways it was kind of part of modern life uh, because they wanted to uh, help people out um, and kind of uh, get them out of England uh, and Europe and that's actually so a lot of this area um, was uh, kind of like refugees uh, prisoners and all kinds of um, pretty particularly I mean just to get out here is a pretty big feat I mean there's no map at the time um, and you're basically talking about going out into the middle of nowhere. Um, and so here's the early diagram of what Tasman did. Um, so he actually made two different voyages. He discovered the south part here, kind of went around. Most of that stuff is on this side. If you're familiar with sailing, uh, it's a really big deal to have a place that you can dock your boat next to the uh, ocean. So uh, basically what I'm talking about is marinas and stuff so uh if you look at the coast here um there's just so many it's much more intricate in here you can basically park your boat lots of different places that's also gets pretty shallow um but it's really nice little bay right in here and that's why hobart is even to this day uh considered the main uh sailing area they have a major race that goes between sydney and hobart we're going to talk about that in a moment as well um, but definitely you want to familiar yourself I'm actually a certified U.S. sailing instructor. Uh, I'm one of the fastest sailors on the East Coast at one point. Uh, we won all our races uh, on Cape Cod, and it's a very competitive uh, region for sailing. So uh, it's no joke understanding sailing. I definitely recommend uh, learning as much as you can about the Earth. And that was, to me, I'm super thankful. Uh, almost everything I know about the planet as a kid, I would spend hours and hours listening to the planet uh, on a sailboat um, because we learned to race very fast. Um, so here you can see the Tasman Sea. So it's actually named after Tasman. Uh, and it's actually this area between uh, New Zealand um, and uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that that's not shown on this map is actually Tasman lived in Jakarta. Uh, my mom was actually born in Jakarta um, and Almost all of the uh, sailing adventures uh, from the, most of the Europeans were actually, they renamed Jakarta to Batavia um, and actually also grew up near Batavia, Illinois. Um, but it was originally called 
I mean, they had a native name, uh, but the, they renamed it to Batavia, and now it's been changed back to Jakarta. Um, but that's a huge part of history, uh, Jakarta. And then also my great-grandfather was on a sailboat and witnessed uh, the major eruption of Krakatoa, which was considered the largest explosion ever in history of a volcano, which is actually right next to Jakarta in the Sunda Strait. So there's some weird family history that I have uh, that I'm still trying to understand. But this Tasman Sea, you can kind of see uh, this huge area between uh, there. And then you have just north of there, which is called the Coral Sea, um, which you have the coral reefs and some other interesting areas like that. Now, um, <clears throat> I wanted to carefully look at this diagram. So you basically have this whole ocean called the Southern Ocean, and it actually has changed quite a bit. They've actually, in 1928, it was originally defined way up to here, 1937, and then it kind of moved further and further south, and then now, 2002, they actually moved it all the way further south to here. Um, but it gets extremely dangerous. This is some of the most dangerous sailing in the world. Again, 40-foot waves, extremely cold temperatures. It doesn't get worse than that in terms of sailing. Um, cold weather is definitely something that you do, do not look forward to uh, on a sailboat. Um, so here's some more details about how that Southern Ocean was defined. Um, and you can see uh, there's actually even some debates, 60 degrees south um, on that um map here so uh and then here's like kind of an old school map uh kind of looking at the southern polar region uh it's one of the earliest maps of antarctica um and australia um and i wanted to show this picture because it's a real picture it shows these guys were trying to go to antarctica and look at what happened to them they got stuck on their sailboat in all this ice and they actually bailed out. This is in 1911. It was the first time they tried to cross Antarctica. And they actually started uh, partly in New Zealand and in Tasmania. Um, so their whole understanding of Antarctica actually was related to Tasmania. Uh, and even to this day, the first guy that I ever met that traveled to Antarctica flew from New Zealand, uh, essentially Tasmania. Um, and they prepared for many weeks. So they got training essentially in like Tasmania or uh, New Zealand. Uh, and here you can kind of see some of the weird uh, shapes around uh, Antarctica, uh, showing kind of uh, some of the um, uh, different depths as well as this kind of weird circular loop. Um, and I really wanted to highlight this, is that currents really matter. Um, here you can see Tasmania, um, but there's actually these weird currents. Um, here you can see kind of the way that it circulates around all of Antarctica, um, but there's actually also a current um, that kind of heads around Antarctica here. And then these circular loops also show up other areas around the planet as well. Um, and then here you can kind of see uh, some of the sea biology. Um, this is photoplankton maps. So there's actually quite a lot um, down on the South Pole there. Um, and then here's kind of what people consider the Southern Sea. So there's many different ideas about what the Southern Sea is. Um, but you can see Tasmania kind of showing up over here. Um, and then here is some of those original uh, voyages across Antarctic. You can see they started in Hobart. Um, they went to this uh, other island. And there's also New Zealand. And they kind of went across here to the South Pole, uh, Ross. And they actually lost their boat. <laughs> Um, like you saw in that picture, um, I think this is a pretty old diagram. Um, it looks new, but it's basically 1900s. Um, and you can see they crossed here and then maybe made, made it to Elephant Island somehow uh, and were picked up uh, by the other team on the other side of Antarctica. Um, but you can definitely see that uh, basically Tasmania was a critical part of that whole first understanding of Antarctica. Um, and then here you can kind of see how the currents circulate around Antarctica as well as go other parts of the entire planet. Um, so the, the wind and the current is so strong here that it basically affects the current for the entire planet um, all the way almost to, to the North Pole, right? Um, which is pretty unbelievable. <clears throat> you see this diagram here shows some of that. Um, you see some of this Arctic current. It actually goes deep current because cold water basically is below, hot water is above. Um, so it basically affects <clears throat> a lot of the deep current of the ocean you can see this goes quite far um, and it finally becomes warm 
around here um, and actually is kind of warmer on the Tasmanian side which is interesting to point out uh, but you can see that this this belt uh, is super important to understand I could not I still even to this day it's hard for me to completely understand uh, this diagram um, and then here you can kind of see that spinning uh, uh, gyres and I really wanted to get into detail about this because um, you actually have to use if you're sailing uh, you have to use uh, the current. Uh, definitely, you do not sail directly where you want to go. You always use the current. Um, so the current diagrams are super important, um, especially these current belts here, because uh, these red ones are very important because that's actually surface water. Um, <clears throat> and you can see uh, the direction of the surface water really matters a lot <clears throat> as you think about this. So here's kind of more of this <clears throat> whole picture. Um, and then you can see um, how this relates to the Indian Ocean, different oceans, as well as some of the deep sea floor maps. Um, <clears throat> nitrogen diagram, <clears throat> it's just such a different um, world in the South Pole. And you can see it starts with Tasmania here. Um, and it shows some of the details there. Um, <clears throat> this is actually called the Cook Strait. This is between <clears throat> uh, the boot in, uh, I just wanted to go into detail on this particular uh, gap because this gap here, <clears throat> we may need to actually understand why this gap exists as well as why this gap exists. This is called the Cook uh, Gap here. Um, and it may be very important uh, to look at some of the details uh, on that diagram. So that's why I included uh, that into this in such a detailed uh, diagram. Um, there's a guy called Yahoo Series. I don't know if you've ever been following this, um, but I'd really want to work with this guy. He's hilarious. He actually filmed one of the most popular movies called Young Einstein in Tasmania. It's about uh, a guy who is an apple farmer in Tasmania and uh, thinks that he's young Einstein. Um, so it's a very funny movie, and here's some pictures of him. He kind of has changed a lot. He's a lot older now. Uh, this movie was quite a long time ago. Um, but <clears throat> here's one of the best diagrams I could find, uh, and this basically explains how important, uh, you can see it's labeled as Batavia here in this diagram. Uh, but yeah, it all started in Europe, but they had to travel around Africa um, and then they actually stopped in India, um, and basically it's a big question of colonization there. Um, but the headquarters really was right in here, and you can see uh, basically shows some dates here, 1602, uh, Java Island, um, and really it doesn't even show anything uh, about Tasmania in this diagram, but a lot of that operation, even Tasman himself, ended up moving back to Java, which is where my mom was born, coincidentally. Um, here's another diagram showing even more details uh, how that really relates to, uh, again, called uh, Jakarta or Batavia in this diagram, as well as I had no idea how important uh, Sri Lanka was, uh, but you can start to see India uh, being kind of a, uh, a point where they you know, also use that as an as a area to understand what was going on. Um, so here uh, I just wanted to highlight each of the um, exploration projects. So Spain, you know, they speak Spanish in Latin America, um, and they also did some stuff in uh, the Philippines, right? So you can see that diagram there. Uh, Portugal, well, that's Brazil, right? Um, and then you also have some Portuguese kind of coming in through here um, and this diagram. And the Netherlands, this is where you get into uh, what happened with uh, Antarctica, and you're actually getting further north here, right? So a lot of these sailors um, actually did go further south, and actually there's not shown in this diagram, Tasman's actually went into Tasmania uh, there, but you can see they did quite a lot of exploring. Uh, and then France, uh, a lot of people speak French in Africa, and they actually um, did quite a lot in the Caribbean here, and as well as in southern part of the United States. Um, this was all French colony originally. Um, so that's a big part of history, uh, as well as uh, certainly France uh, plays a huge role in Africa, uh, since that's the language they speak now, uh, similar to Spanish speaking that in Latin America. Um, so England is also very interesting because it's English, I'm sorry, the English in Australia. So this diagram doesn't really show everything, unfortunately, um, but it does show uh, quite a lot. I mean, they speak English essentially in Canada, and you can kind of... Um, put some of the pieces of the puzzle. The, part of the problem is these maps say, hey, it's uh, this country or that country, but 
uh, you kind of got to use some common sense uh, to really understand. And Russia actually did most of the land area uh, while they did on the ocean front. Uh, Russians actually worked on the land there. Um, this map was really cool because I started to realize how important uh, religious stuff was. Uh, if you think about it in the United States or even in Latin America um, or even in India or even Japan or even in a lot of this was actually religious uh, related stuff. So the stuff that we're talking about, uh, whether you're working for a company, a big company or a small company, uh, spiritual stuff definitely plays a huge role. I mean, every single one of these pretty much was a religious event. Uh, they went to these different parts of the world and I have friends who are missionaries uh, and they're still doing this even to this day, uh, visiting foreign countries, uh, trying to understand the world through a spiritual perspective. And actually that worked. Um, it wasn't about, uh, I mean, the worst things they did um, were terrible, um, but a lot of the uh, good things that they try to do um, were uh, spiritually minded. Um, so here's basically showing all these diagrams about Australia, uh, and you can see it's really in the 1800s, um, a lot of this diagram here. You see the 1600s, originally Tasman uh, did do his, you can see down here in the bottom, it shows 1642, basically going to the southern part. He was a complete nut to go this far south. I mean, this is the most dangerous waters on the planet. You have to have a very solid ship. I mean, we're talking about wooden boats back then, 1600s, you have no no... I mean, it's, there's just no knowledge of what you may see or hit. Um, and you have to, I mean, you, you can't be, if you're sailing at night, you can't, typically the wind dies down at night. So you're not sailing at night, thank God. But uh, it's just, it could have, it was just, it's a, such an amazing feat. Um, and you can see Cook came back and perhaps, although he's more famous than Tasman, Tasman did a lot of the original work. Um, so you'll see Cook's name all over this. Um, but by that time, the 1700s, they already had uh, many diagrams of how the world was. Um, and then here you can see Cook uh, basically really nailing it um, on this uh, New Zealand portion. Uh, and that's that strait between here and here. <clears throat> this is the Bass Strait down there. <clears throat> and then this is the most detailed diagram of Australia. Uh, and this was done, I think, in the 19... 1800s or late 1800s um, but it really does show so much detail um and it's uh the world's uh first complete um picture of australia including uh, tasmania down there and then here's the nautical charts and i'm sorry we still got a bunch more to go through here um but if you're looking uh for work um most of the most of the goods are shipped um so it's really important to take a look at those maritime maps um i think i have a maritime map here um so you can see um basically a lot of that is through melbourne here and then it goes through hobart um, and this is going up to sydney um, but as you zoom out on this map um, you can start to put the pieces of the puzzle together um, because you start to see where the boats are going <clears throat> on this entire map. Um, and I think I can do a different layer here, um, which is this. Let me get this a little bit brighter so you can see. So <clears throat> here you can start to see all the shipping lines, um, but it gets quite complex. Um, but you may want to really look at this. Um, if you are looking for work, um, you can add the ports in on this. Um, and I think you can do marinas separately um, and then zoom in and then you'll start to see <clears throat> where these anchor signs are. So there's ports and marinas. Um, so ports are generally bigger, uh, you know, not, you can't just sail into there on a normal uh, sailing boat, uh, but a marina you can. So you may want to look at both of those um, if you're considering uh, different types of work. Uh, in the area, um, there's definitely a lot of marinas. I think these uh, yellow ones are marinas and the ports are the uh, less common ones on that map. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice here. I've been talking uh, for a while here, um, but it is so important to think about the ocean uh, for the work here. And then here is kind of a diagram showing all the operational areas um, for uh, boating around Tasmania. Um, and <clears throat> this is the art school uh, that they went to in Sydney um, that uh, the guy that did Young Einstein <laughs> worked at. So I just wanted to look at that. Here's all the mining operations. So 
Um, <clears throat> basically, what's been going on is that the polar stuff is becoming huge. Um, the biggest diamond that was recently discovered was done by a Canadian company, but they were in Africa. And it's kind of scary because uh, once the mines go through here, uh, it pretty much tears up the land entirely. You can see a lot on the west coast here. These are the names of the mines. I don't even know if I should be showing that image here. Um, but here's Earth at night, um, and I wanted to just look at that carefully uh, with everybody so you can see what that looks like. Um, so you can see in the backdrop, you have Melbourne there, uh, and then Hobart, and you can kind of zoom in and see where the activity is on the island. So it's not really a population map, uh, but you can see certain ports out here actually do have some light. Uh, this map is very helpful if you are looking to work uh, anywhere around the world, uh, you can zoom out here and start to see essentially where the electrical activity is. Um, not only that, uh, there's the open infrastructure map. This shows the actual electrical lines. You can see this is fiber optic cables. So the internet essentially is coming across from Australia um, and the power actually comes from Australia. So they're very dependent uh, on Australia. You can't really see that on the map here, um, but basically that's the power lines uh, running right through there uh, and that will really influence the future of what's going on here um, and then the USGS map um, I always like to use you can see one earthquake in the last 30 days so they are getting some earthquakes up there um, but you can just see some of the topology here of how this heads out into the deep ocean as well as some weird areas uh, that you might not quite expect uh, on the map so that map is really interesting to look at and then this is the flight flights there's so few flights uh going here a lot of this goes to sydney and melbourne uh, and that's it they don't have international flights other than to australia there's some smaller airports around the island but it may be uh very difficult uh to actually get anything there and then here again is the infrastructure map um that i think we already looked at and then you can see kind of the population i did a quick little population thing here and then the main part of the island, uh, there's definitely a lot happening on the north. Um, so in the far future, um, how this is connected to the North Pole will be very interesting, uh, particularly this city here um, for farming, uh, because this is probably more of a farming town here, whereas this is more of a seaport here. Um, and it's actually further south uh, quite a bit. Um, and it's actually colder down there. Um, here's kind of a zoom in of what's going on in Hobart. And you can see there's definitely some population outside of the main city um, and then some more details looking at even further out to here and you can see some spots in here as well um, and then the soil map uh, you might want to look at because it's definitely not farmable on this side of the island um, it's very different kinds of soil um, and then the geolog geological map also gives us some clues about what's going on in the island here as well um, and it's actually pretty complicated geology um, that is kind of a simplified version, um, but this one gives us kind of more detail there. And then here's more of that shipping. Um, and these are all buoy signs. So there's if you're sailing around Tasmania, you'll ha have these electronic signals that you can hear essentially uh, from there. And then here's more of that farming picture. Um, definitely kind of set more on the... Uh, east side of the island as well as north side and then the even these two smaller islands are being pretty heavily farmed uh, which is interesting to see and then certainly a lot more farming going on in australia uh, there and then this is the soil map uh, i really need to go through this this is one of the main ones that i didn't look at in enough detail um, but certainly uh, should be looked at in more detail uh, if you are looking to like collaborate um, one of the things that I've realized is that everything is about food. So any type of business you're doing, whether you're having a business meeting, it's going to be about food. When it comes back to it, people, once they leave work or, or even at work during lunchtime, uh, some of the most serious conversations actually end up having around food uh, and things. Um, here's the spirit of Tasmania. Um, if I were to travel to Tasmania, I would actually not even take an airplane i take a boat just because it's really important to be out on the water and even take a train, public transportation. It's probably what I'd be doing primarily. So uh, this is a picture of the train uh, that goes along the West Coast. I would be very interested in that. And then here's a sailing race.
basically going from Sydney to Hobart. This is perhaps some of the best sailors in the world are still down in Australia and New Zealand. If you watch all the major races, um, these guys are the best in the world. And here's young Einstein, which I thought was pretty funny. And a really famous theater uh, in... And here's a, just a totally rad picture, kind of showing the Aboriginal tribes. And then this is uh, Hobart, which is their current city. So you can kind of see um, them swimming in the water, which would probably be very cold. I can't believe that in this image, but um, you can see some details. It was done in 1834 there, that image. Um, and then this is the topology of this. Um, so when you're doing uh, work and business, uh, with any of these places, uh, you definitely want to look at the topology. It's going to be a lot harder. Uh, you can see Tehobert actually has this river system that goes pretty far in here. Uh, and you'd actually have to cross a little bit of mountain range to get to the north side. Uh, but this is definitely one uh, to look at on this. As well as some of the satellite imagery, you can start to see the clouds on this as well. Um, and we actually had really spectacular crowds to look at today. You can see just how powerful... Uh, that whole windstorm is kind of circulating here, heading right down to the magnetic pole and then coming back up again around through there. So that's a pretty spectacular image. Um, and I definitely recommend looking at that. Um, there's also a few other really amazing diagrams. I'm trying to get through this as quickly as possible. Um, and here's more of that geology um, because so much of the work of the planet really boils down to housing um, and how we use the natural resources. So I was really surprised in terms of that. Um, and then here's some of those early voyages uh, by Bass, which is the Bass Strait. So he actually came up, um, this is quite a few hundred years, almost 200, 150 years or so after Tasman originally discovered it, uh, Bass came back and did a lot of the extra homework uh, definitely detailed that whole area out. Um, and then here is the Van Diemen's Land uh, produced. This is the most detailed map uh, ever made uh, by this guy uh, right here. And I thought that was important to uh, look at. And he actually went around all of Australia. And remember that most detailed map of Australia was actually his. And then here's just the craziness of Cook's voyages. And it's actually, he's thought of a, he died in Hawaii eventually. Um, but really his voyages out into this area were the most interesting. Um, I mean, he did have to go around Africa and he went definitely through Jakarta. And a lot of that at the time, like we mentioned, was actually through Jakarta. So this whole Sunda Strait, super important Uh and you'll notice they always traveled typically this way, except for Tasman also went through the Southern Ocean. This is extremely dangerous to be able to travel here. And you can imagine if Cook did travel this far south, um, and this is not for certain whether or not this map is true or not. I mean, it's really hard. This is 100 years ago uh, to actually diagram this out perfectly. Um, but, man, by getting this cold, you would definitely want to die in Hawaii at that point so it's like you know he there's called the cook islands out here and some other really interesting areas um, so if you are an explorer this is one of the coolest pictures i thought um is basically it shows tasman's boats with cook's boat um so you can see in the harbor here uh they actually did meet up um so uh they uh excuse me so yeah so there's actually there's a couple different sailors so it's just Really interesting to see how these sailors, and the thing I realized after studying all this, there were so few people on the entire planet that ever explored this much. Even to this day, people have never explored this much. Um, so back then, there was maybe only, let's say 12 people in history that really went through and did this kind of exploration. Um, so we're very fortunate to even look at this. Now here's Adventure Bay. That's where this picture was taken. Uh, which is actually right in Tasmania, um, which is right here. Um, so you can see um, some of those details in the 1700s, um, kind of cook. Um, and here is uh, some other uh, voyages, and you can also see how that related to South Africa. Again, that Adventure Bay area, um, and through here, and then, I, and then always going through Jakarta right here, um, that point. So it's just... Uh, 
super surprising. And then here you can see um, even before um, these white people showed up and mapped it out in detail, there was essentially quite dark people, almost African. So one of the most surprising things about this whole map um, is that Papua New Guinea is very black. Um, there's actually pretty white skinned. Uh, Asians are, you know, Chinese are pretty white skinned, um, but it gets pretty dark skinned here. And it actually got pretty dark skinned in Aboriginal Australia uh, and some other areas. So it's actually, there's a part of the story of Africa that's not even known how Africans uh, maybe went across the entire ocean and started to uh, work in Papua New Guinea. That's a pretty remarkable story um, that we may never really know unless we understand it spiritually what really happened. So you can see this is a terrifying diagram showing, uh, you know, they're hanging white people, hanging Africans is terrible. This is like a actual proclamation. They posted this poster up. Here's another terrifying picture. You can see these guys uh, trying to attack these other guys. Um, it looks, they're not even certain whether they really want to do this. The sun is setting. They're having a little bonfire. They have guns, maybe no guns. Um, and then kind of an early picture of what it might have looked like in Tasmania, uh, just with a little bonfire hanging out, um, doing some things. And then I love this picture too, uh, because it's such a cool little boat, um, you know, just a bunch of sticks being put together. But how did these people get here? Um, because, you know, when you have to get from Africa, you know, essentially, you know, they got to Madagascar, they'd have to get all the way around here they'd have to go through here and eventually make it all the way over to Papua New Guinea and then down through here um and the scary part is if it's five miles you cannot see across this is like thousands and thousands of miles right so um you know you're not able to get to some of these areas without really spiritual guidance it's completely um scary I mean at the time I mean how would you possibly get to hawaii for instance so uh there was aboriginals in hawaii so in here is kind of the original diagram of what the uh when when they when they kind of quote unquote discovered tasmania how they diagram this out reason this is important is because how will we diagram the north pole like some of the work that i've been working on is some of the earliest ideas in history for saying how we would work with other planets and suggesting that this would be the capital of the North Pole. Some of this deep history um, still remains to this day um, because of the geology and because of uh, the landways and because of the cultural things. It's really important to look at all of the diagrams. Um, and then they're also having huge power problems in Tasmania. So they're starting to do hydroelectric. You can see this dam does not look very solid looks like this thing is going to fall apart any day um but uh and then part of the story is this is that i wanted to come back to it is that these were refugees these were prisoners criminals it was not who you thought um the sailors the stories of the people that originally explored this area there's so much of the story that is not allowed to be told i mean these people were locked up in this this is a fancy place like this is a solid brick to build this in the um you know 1700s 1600s this is a lot of work uh back then to do this um and it's it's there's there's definitely way more to the story uh than we're talking about and you can look at this tasmanian picture um just a boat coming in here uh with nothing right there was nothing back then no maps no diagrams uh, it was extremely mysterious uh, land, um, and uh, you know, and, and look at this bay like it's it's just out of this world uh, kind of um, picture. And you can see there's a little lighthouse right out there, um, but it's an extraordinary land um, to understand. So, uh, and this is basically pointing out to the magnetic pole. Um, so. Uh, very mysterious and i really wanted to get into every single island, every single tallest mountain on tasmania i went through looked at a couple of the peaks um and i was surprised how far north it is so on this map a lot of the peaks are actually in this region and up in here they're not necessarily over here 
they're actually more on the north side of the island, um, surprisingly. So that's uh, mainly partly because there's more landmass up here. Um, but how does that relate to the North Pole? Uh, what What's really going on there is super interesting. Um, it looks like my brother's here. Um, so I'm going to have to finish up this conversation in a second yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'll be done in a second here, Brent. So um, here is what the Parliament House looked like. Again, massive structure built in 1901. That's pretty recently. That's only about 100 years ago. This is how it looks today. Uh, certainly very fancy. The other thing I wanted to talk about that really surprised me is the Green Party. Um, they invented that in Tasmania. Um, a lot of people, like in California, out west, and in Europe, uh, okay. they say, hey, I want to be part of the Green Party. Oh, yeah, but that yeah, all started... Actually. That all started in Tasmania, and actually how that relates to North Pole politics, you can see right up here in Silverbald, uh, there's actually Green Party already up there, um, but it's heavily thought of as Australian concept, and that's, what is the Green Party? They're basically saying environmentalists, they're saying, you know, fight for the environment, and things like that, so that's a super awesome history of Tasmania um, that needs to be thought about carefully. Um, especially as we think about off-Earth concepts, um, there's going to be radically different perspectives as you go towards the North Pole and South Pole, as well as in all these, yeah. every part yeah. of the well, planet has a different, a has some different ideas. Um, and look at this picture. I, I just can't explain, like, this whole picture here. Uh, and so, I, I can't remember. So, yeah, this is Lake. Let me just read this out here. So, it says... Uh, where, where is this? Oh, gosh. So it's Lake Peddler from Mount Eliza. So I don't know. That's an unbelievably awesome picture. I just can't imagine uh, Tasmania. So here's a, also one of the earliest maps. Uh, I'm sorry, my brother's on the phone right now. It's kind of making it a little bit confusing. Um, he came over to help me out at the house. Um, one of the most important museums in the world is also here. In Tasmania, it's a modern art museum. It's one of the largest modern art museums in the world, apparently. Um, and then here's some crazy movies. I would not get into the movie list. Uh, it's actually quite scary. A lot of the movies that have been produced in Tasmania. Um, and it's actually been quite violent uh, down there. Uh, even recently, uh, there was a massacre down there. Uh, here's what the dock looks like. Uh, you may want to look at that. If you're landing at the airport, uh, it's a quite an amazing airport. You can see kind of the backdrop there um and i kind of wanted to end it with that so uh anyway i'm gonna pause this my brother's here we're gonna chat about some things um we just went through a lot of information so wherever you are on the planet there's gonna be a lot of different ideas and different people to work with um, yeah, so basically this has to do with the entire planet uh, and also the future of how we understand kind of the, the thinking and the philosophy of our planet, right? Um, it's just one small island in that whole discussion. Um, and it's my computer's kind of like crashing here. Um, but all this is connected to everything else. You know, right here, you basically have these mysterious islands. Um, all this heading up to the Philippines. Another on the opposite side, you have Taiwan, Hunan Island. You have, uh, you know, and, and the other perspective is it's not just about the islands. Um, that was one small island that we looked at, but we're actually talking about vast land masses. Um, so, yeah, it was Tasmania, but look at the size of India here, and then just the vastness of Africa, and really the rest of our entire planet. Um, wherever you are um, so really what we're trying to say is how a small area really matters like Tasmania um, and <coughs> excuse me looking at how that fits in <coughs> excuse me wow I'm trying to finish this as soon as possible um, so people can look at some other things but and then look at all these islands here that we got um, and of course remember it's not just about the islands uh, but it's important for us to understand the details <coughs> Excuse me. Wow. Eating some spicy food. Um, but as we get towards the North Pole, um, we may be able to spiritually connect uh, different parts of the planet together. Um, so that's really what the goal is here. So no matter where you are, 
on the planet um, to be able to work together um, and understand how that's connected. Like here you have the river system heading all the way down into Africa. So that's pretty simple to understand uh, that that would all be connected. But now we're talking about vastly different areas of the planet uh, being connected. So, uh, and that's really um, a different question entirely sometimes. Um, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed this study. I'm gonna go back to Tasmania here and we'll go all the way around here, how they explored this. And uh, here you are back in, in Tasmania. Thank you so much. I hope you really enjoyed the topic. See you later. So I just wanted to restate this, is that uh, you know all this discussion has to do with how to understand the planet uh, essentially spiritually and logically. Um, it was a vast discussion. Realizing Antarctica mattered. Um, that whole discussion, realizing that it, that it looks like a brain, uh, realizing what this this took thousands of years to get to this point um, and we're trying to go even further right um, this knowledge that happened 200 years ago started by defining what Australia looked like defining like we didn't even have that map um, so now we're starting to go off the planet um, and certainly there are these guys were smart guys that worked on this in the past and we need to kind of see what the details were even going back to the Aboriginal people and the people that originally lived here, there's a story um, that is pretty far out. And I think if we go all the way back to the Aboriginals, um, because they didn't really have the conquest concepts, they probably, maybe they did a little bit, maybe they did a lot bit, who knows. But when they discovered Australia um, before all these other people did, the first people that discovered it, there's definitely a very interesting story on that side um so it's probably true um that maybe i'm one of the early people to start talking about this being the capital of the north pole perhaps this is the first discussion ever to seriously look at the details um and to start saying how it's all connected to the north pole um and you know <laughs> of course we were like early on the discussion antarctica looking like a brain this is like a lot of the first discussions ever. Uh, the capital of Antarctica, right over here. Um, these are very interesting discussions to be having. This is like a weird thing uh, for me personally, um, just to talk about it. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, a really fun and really wild uh, version of the Earth, right? I think this whole notion of capitals has gotten pretty boring. And we really want to have a really fun new definition as we get into the next few hundred years or even thousand years. This idea of a capital is going to have to change quite a lot uh, logically and spiritually about what how we work with the rest of the planet together. So with that, I'm going to close it up and I really hope that you have a fun time. Uh, and if you have any questions or you want to try to work with me or discuss these topics with me, send me an email. I don't really check email. Probably best to text me or contact somebody in my family and we can try to get together and talk about it. Hope you enjoyed the discussion. Thank you so much. I'll go through these last pictures with you just in case uh, you wanted to see everything. The boating diagrams, the marine traffic map. This is the geology map. I'll even zoom out a little bit so you can see. Uh, what this looks like here it's kind of crashing on me at this point because it's so much information uh, but here's the soil map you can see uh, the soil gets quite complicated as you get up here and then you can see Melbourne and then you have Sydney some of the population and then some of the infrastructure this is, gets pretty interesting as you get towards Sydney as well um, and this one had to be reloaded um, but uh, let's see if it loads up here fast enough and you can see the flight map. This is a live flight map You can see quite a different story as you get towards Sydney and Melbourne So if you're trying to fly down to Hobart, it's actually quite difficult to get there And this is the last earthquakes in the last 30 days and You can see um, this loads up a lot faster um, but Essentially, it's all happening right in here as you get towards Fiji Kind of kicking that all out and then here is the global map for the uh, 
lights an Earth at night. Um, and you'll see Perth, uh, Java is even to this day, you can see up in here in Indonesia, definitely well lit um, place. And then New Zealand being quite dark. So it's actually quite a different perspective. You could probably spend a lot of time just looking at just this map here. And then here's the mineral map. I think I got, if I zoom out on this, it's gonna go crazy on me. Um, just takes a really long time to load uh, that. And then here's the last and most detailed map it was in 1811. You may wanna take a look at that and then go through and look at all the world maps. Okay, thank you so much. And I really hope it gets really awesomely fun to look at the planet as well as remember to look at how this relates to the entire solar system and to the universe. Um, so when I looked at this first, I started to think really wildly about how this is related to the entire universe. Um, and that was a really exciting topic. Thank you so much.